Hey guys, it's Alex VA back here with another video, and tonight's video is going to be a part two to the Larry X listener. Um, so I have decided to kind of make this um a little bit sad. Um, there's gonna be trigger warnings, uh, mentions of self harm, um, of like not self harming, but like scars of self harming, um, scars from abuse uh drinking uh there might be a little bit of drug use um and not like weed like heavy drugs um and like there might be a point where there's gonna be a lot of yelling uh so <clears throat> i thought i would inform you um so yeah this one's going to be a little a little sad um but i hope you guys enjoyed Anyway, or I hope you guys enjoy, not enjoyed. Sorry. Anyways, let's get on with the video. You don't remember much of that the rest of the night with Larry. All you remember is you guys ate a lot of snacks, watched a couple of movies, and you both ended up falling asleep on the um, fold-out bed. You woke up around 10 o'clock. You were surprised that you slept in so far, but then you remembered you haven't gotten that stoned well since before your mom got married. You kind of missed it. It was really fun, and you had a lot of fun with Larry. But your mom wanted you home by 10, 10.30, so you decided to leave him a little note saying that you had to leave. And that you, and then you grabbed all your stuff and walked out the back door, uh, or the little steps up to the back door, and walked back home, which wasn't far from the bridge. Um, that Larry found you yesterday. You walked past the bridge and into your house where you found that your mom was already gone, probably at work. Your stepdad was asleep on the couch with beer bottles around him and a fresh one in his hand. Halfway gone. He was probably drinking all night. Great, you thought, as you walked up to your room. Walked behind you, closing the door and locking it, then putting your back up against it and taking a couple of breaths before laying down back on your bed. You started locking your door ever since a couple ever since the last time that your stepdad came in and tried doing things to you. Luckily your mom learned to defend yourself defend your mom taught you how to defend yourself, but you got you still got hurt in the process. There were multiple bruises and cuts and scratches on your back, some of them scarred to reveal enormous scars, some of them went away and others stayed. You took off your jacket, you took off your sweatshirt as you felt the fabric rubbing up against them. You still you still can't get that night out of your head, the night that you actually hit him for the first time and almost killed him, but you couldn't bring yourself to do it. After you took off your sweater, you looked down at your arms to see your old self-harm scars. They healed up fast, or at least faster than you thought they were going to. You stepped out of your thoughts by a loud banging on your door. Listener, what did we say about locking doors in this house? Open this door now. You ignored him, knowing that there's no way he can get into your room if the door was locked. Instead, you grabbed your headphones and plugged them into your uh, little music device, the thing that you used to listen to music on, and put it on full blast and put them on your ears as the sound of yelling as your stepdad tried to get into your room. You know he couldn't, so you just rolled over and closed your eyes, getting ready to take a little nap until you heard a hinge fall off. You sh shot up quickly and realized that somehow he had hit it hard enough to make a hinge fall off, which meant if he tried hard enough, he could get the other two off. You quickly got up off of your bed and grabbed a lot of uh, grabbed a couple of things and started towards your window when all of a sudden your door came down. There he was, 
standing in your doorway. He was shirtless. Pants were low. His eyes were dim and drunken as he looked at you. You knew it was going to happen. You quickly jumped out your window, thanking yourself that you had taken out the screen right when you moved. You got onto the roof and closed the door before, or closed the window before he could get to you. Then from there, you took the makeshift ladder that you made down to the bottom floor and ran. You didn't know exactly where you were gonna run, but you ran. You ran for your life. Knowing that he was drunk and wasn't going to follow you, you stopped after you got up to what looked like to be a church. The church that your stepdad and your mom were about to force you to go to. You walked past it, not wanting to go in. And and soon found the Addison Apartments. You knew Larry was in there, but you didn't think he'd want to see you again, so you just kept walking. On a par- in a, at a park nearby, you heard a familiar voice. You looked over to see Ash over there with Sal and Todd. Todd was with a guy, looked to be about a year older, black with, I think, with you thought, dreads. You walked over, Ash being the first one to realize you, and ran over and hugged you. Listener, hey! Whoa, ditched the hoodie, did you? Yeah, you're wearing a tank top. What are those? On your arm? Are you sure? Okay. Hey, listener, what's up? Oh, hey, Sal. I didn't realize you came over here. Yeah, I'm usually quiet. <laughs> hey, guys, who's this? Uh, listener, Todd, you didn't meet, or you met them yesterday, remember? Oh, yeah. Nice to meet, or nice to see you again. I'm Todd, duh. Uh, this is Neil. Hey, I'm Neil. Nice to meet you. What are we doing? Oh, we're just hanging out here. Um, Larry was still asleep when we came to grab him, but yeah. Yeah, um, Ash insisted on waking him up, but I knew that if we did, he'd probably get really mad. Whatever, Sal, it's like almost noon. It's fine. He should be awake now. Hmm? What was that, listener? What do you mean he shouldn't be awake? You were with him all night? Wait, wait, wait. So, you, listener, the one that he didn't have the best feeling around at first was with Larry Johnson at his place in his room alone all night doing what? No, because I feel like there's like something going on here. Are you all like... I I was just curious, okay? Okay, I was just curious. Okay. Ash, what Sal? <sighs> Listener is new. Larry just met them. Do you think Larry is that much of a guy? That much of a douchebag, honestly, to do that? I mean... Don't you dare say yes. Okay, fine. No, he's not. That's what I thought. Listener, if you want to, you can come hang out with us. Okay. You grabbed your hoodie quickly as so that way you could put it on quickly so they wouldn't see the scars that you had on your back. 
You were walking, putting it on, and Sal ended up behind you somehow before you could slip it over your um, back. And he saw them. He ran up to you and tapped you on your shoulder. Hey, listener, I know this kind of isn't my place, but um, I heard what Ash said about your arms and how she saw lines. Um, but I saw scars on your back. Is everything all right? Yeah, I'm just worried. Um, you know, I don't want anything going on or happening with you. Are you sure? All right. Um, who stitched up those scars, by the way? I mean, they looked pretty deep. A friend did. Okay. Let's go before they, um, you know, run off without us. After you guys have hung out for a little while, you decided that you were going to head back home since, well, it was about the time that your stepdad went to work and your mom was going to be home. So you were able to sit in your room with your door unlocked and actually feel somewhat safe. I mean, at least if your door was back on its hinges. As you were walking home, you walked past the Addison apartments and past the treehouse when you heard a familiar voice call you. Hey, listener. Hey. Do you want to come up here for a bit? Please? <laughs> okay. Pretty sweet, huh? It's like my own little bat cave. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hmm? Oh, my dad built this for me before he disappeared. Yeah, one day he was here and just the next he was poof, gone. <laughs> yeah, um. I don't know. I just kind of thought that maybe, you know, something I just sit up here for no reason. I mean, sometimes I bring like music and I jam out and smoke some weed or whatever, but that's about it. Oh, yeah, I did tell you that I've done heavy drugs, huh? Um, I'm not on them anymore. Um, but I used to be when I was, I think, 8th grade. Yeah. Middle school, right? Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I used to be on, uh, I used to snort coke, <laughs> um, and smoke meth. Uh, but I stopped because I realized that shit fucks up your life. I still do weed just because it helps a lot with my sleep. Um, again, I don't get that of sleep. You could probably tell by the eye bags. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's about the only reason why I smoke weed, and sometimes I'll just smoke it for fun, because I'm bored. Yeah. Anyways, um, about last night, you left early. Why? You had to be home early. Oh. Is that where you were heading? Home? Oh, if you wanna... No? Alright. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Mom told me about it. Yeah. Let me guess, Ashley wanted to wake me up? Thought so. And let me guess, Sal or Todd stopped her? Sal knew it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like a 12.30 and I just got up, so thought I'd come out here, just sit out here and listen. I don't know, for anything. Then I heard you and thought, oh. Call them up here, have a little chat. I don't know. Yeah. Um. 
If you want to, you can stay the night again tonight. I don't mind. Yeah. All right. So we're going to fast forward a bit. Um, you're at Larry's house again. You already asked your mom. Your mom said it was fine. And you all are talking and you come to the subject of the baloney at school since he kind of warned you not to eat it. Hmm. Oh, right. Um, the baloney. Do you remember our math teacher, Mrs. Packerston? Yeah, um, well, the school gets the baloney from her. And I was totally convinced that the baloney was not beef, but that it was goat. Um, so Sal, me, and Ashley all snuck into her apartment. She actually lives here. Uh, she got kicked out when we found out about what was in there. Um, but she was selling the school. Um, human skin as baloney. Oh, hey, 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 don't, don't, hey, don't throw up, dude. Trust me, I, I did that tons of times, and it doesn't help. Just be glad you didn't eat it. <laughs> yeah, thought I'd save you from that before everything else. Anyways, do you, you believe in ghosts at all? Yeah? Cool, so I might show you Megan sometime, uh. She's a freaky little ghost girl that lives up in the, on the fifth floor that's literally abandoned and no one lives up there, so. Yeah, she lives in the bathroom, one of them. I can't remember which room, though. So I'll have Sal show you. Alright. Um, do you want to head back to my place and listen to some music? Maybe smoke a little weed? <laughs> Alright, let's go. And I'm going to end this here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you guys want a part three, let me know and I'll give you guys a part three. But yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, so I think the poll did win for Travis. And when I put that up, I totally forgot Travis was gay. So it's going to be a male ex listener, a male listener ex Travis. Um, because, well, Travis is gay. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a male listener next, Travis. I will talk to remember to use he, him pronouns, and if I don't end that video, I am so sorry. That's going to be my first time doing a male listener, so I'm sorry if I do, like, they or accidentally say she. Um, because I also do say, accidentally say she in these videos when it's gender neutral. It's basically everyone. Um, but yeah. When that comes out, it's going to be a male listener ex Travis. If I do any more Travises, it'll most likely be a male listener. Um, I hope you guys enjoy, and I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your morning, day, or night. Bye bye.